guys, I'm Chris Bowden and welcome to the Geek Group. Today, equipment autopsy. We get to take apart a clock. And it's one of those cool clocks with the flippy letters. This is old school. This is like 70s vintage, maybe 80s. It's this great big brick of a clock. It's made by Solari, which is an Italian company and it originally belonged to a gentleman by the name of Witkin. And now you know everything about it that I do. We've had this thing since way back in the Shipper Street Labs. It sat on a shelf for years. It never worked. We've tried to mess with it. It, it moves, but it does everything but keep accurate time. So this may be a repair. I'm going to dig into it, and if I can get it to work, if I can figure out what's wrong with it and, and make it work right, I want to keep it just because it's this really big epic clock with numerals that are like three inches tall. But short of that, I don't know. So let's dig into it and see what we can find out. And if anybody out there has any questions or comments or insights, I have the IRC live right now during the video shoot. And we're broadcasting this to you guys out there on the live stream as well. So you can watch it live, you can get involved, because I like doing interactive videos. It's pretty fun. All right, so let's begin. I think it all starts with these four screws in the back. So we'll grab a screwdriver, like this one. Now, when you're using a screwdriver and you want to work quickly, something to remember is, uh, watch how I hold the screwdriver, pay attention to this. You, you just, you, a little pressure with the thumb up here, that's enough to break it loose. And then if you grab it here and spin on the shaft, you can spin it a lot faster than you can up at the handle. And then we'll get the last one over here. Now, these are the only four screws I've really noticed on the outside of this. There's two thumb screws on the bottom, but I think those just hold the thing in. So, let's see if it'll just slide out nice and easy. Whole back cover pops right off. Oh, wow, look at that. That's kind of neat. We've got all kinds of fun stuff going on here. Now, I don't know where the motor is. Okay, the motor's down on this end. That's a synchronous motor. And then we've got all kinds of fun stuff. I'm going to see knobs on the front move things. Let's look at the mechanism a little. Now, as I turn, there's a knob down on the front, right, right under here. As I turn that knob, you can see this assembly moving. And see that climb right there? Watch this reach up. It's going to grab there. It drops in. It's going to reach up, see, and then it pops back because this thing trips up here. It's, it's a whole bunch of catches and levers. And there's one more catch, and then it's going to have to move a long way, so I want to see what happens. Okay, here we go that rockets forward to here. So we've got our power input here, and it's really, it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff, and the only thing I can see, there's, there's some, I really have no idea how this works. It's, everything's powered off the motor, and it's a synchronous motor, and then everything gets gear reduced down there for various timings. But it looks really simple, and I'd like to not destroy it. It's kind of neat how this works. If you look, close up in here. As this moves around, there's a little cam here and a follower, and that pushes this whole assembly over. Watch. Well, once that gets far enough, it catches on the next one here. And you can see there's, there's a hook like that right here. And that lets it fall, and it pulls the next thing over. So if I just push this up, it'll do that from the right spot. And you can do that over here, too. Now, the other, the other one must just be for an alarm, because as I turn the other knob, there's just a wheel down in the bottom here that moves on a micro switch. So that's neat. And this works the same way, and this one works the same way. So, I don't know, I don't see anything obvious that could be repaired. It's probably something in the motor, like the, the motor is old and wearing out. So I'm going to tear into it. Let's take it apart. We, we got nothing to lose. This could be an interesting autopsy. We're going to get a lot of gears out of this. 
I want to see if I can pull out major assemblies as a, as a whole thing. So we'll take it off the front of the box. This is the kind of thing that could be really cool to make Arduino powered with little solenoids actuating all the stuff inside. That could actually be pretty cool. All right. Shouldn't be anything on that. That should. Here, we can put the matches away. We don't need those now. What's holding that in? It's moving. Oh, the rubber seal. Ah, OK. Now we've got that out of the way. And we can really see the mechanism now. That's cool. Look at all that. You can, you can see the numbers and everything from the back. I don't know what's up with this big, weird gear thing, but I'm really interested to find out. I think it'd be a really cool time lapse to just let this sit and run for like an hour and just show everybody how it works. I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, wow. OK, let's, let's see what we've got here. OK, so if that works there, is there something over here? Because what do we got? We've got hours, minutes, seconds. How can I actuate seconds? That's got to be seconds. OK. OK. The motor, the synchronous motor turns it. Let's see if we can just power this up. Give me a second. Let me see if I can find a way to power this up. Well, let's see. Safety first. We'll cut off that ground. Don't need that. And we'll just strip these leads down. OK, so I've got the uh, two connections on the back here. And there's no color coding to them. It's just straight up AC. So what I'm going to do is thread the wire down inside the connection like that. And then I'm going to physically crimp the connection down onto it forever. If I can find a way to get my crimpers in there. Thread them both in. This is a great idea, but I don't know if it can actually be done. Ah. That that'll maybe work for a minute. Okay, let's see if I can electrocute myself. Okay. Not yet. Do we have a zip tie? No. Okay, well then fire it up. Hey, it's moving. It's moving. 
And you can see that the motor turns this little wheel here. And we can see the mechanism here. This cam's about to move, and it'll do the next minute right there. That's really neat. And this does turn something on or off. Oh, it turns a clock on and off. Turn off. Turn off. No, when, when the power is off, this can't keep any kind of time. It, it has no idea of any external time reference. But we can see the, the wheels moving all the way around here. So this means if I remove this wheel, it's so intricate. It's so pretty. I don't really want to take it apart. I may have actually come across something that's too cool to destroy. It's about to go. No, it's Get ready. Now. There. I flipped it 13, 17, 20. OK. What do you mean? So the second is off by 20 seconds. The second is off by 20 seconds. Well. That's why. No, it can't actuate because the cam is half engaged. There's a big spot here. I'm going to try and move it without shorting it out. You can see the, the mechanism here. This wheel actuates this. And then the small wheel moves the big wheel. The big wheel has a cam on it. And you can see the cam here. Watch in a second. You'll see it come by. It's going to come out right there. See the top of the cam? Now that's going to, this follower here drops in, and that cam follower moves the, the whole minutes thing. And then this is the exact same mechanism here that moves this for the hours thing, and this just moves a lot slower. It's really cool. So that's a look inside an old. I don't know what kind of clock, you know, how you would describe this, like a snap number or a flip number clock or something like that, but that's how they work. It's all little levers pulling it over, and then these peel off from, they're all just done up on wheels. I'm not going to totally disassemble the whole thing because it's just too cool to destroy, and maybe one of our members out there, maybe you, or, or somebody with the time and inclination can get into this and clean it all up and tweak it and get it just perfect, but I'm going to actually put it back together again and get it stable and the next person can come along and tinker with this because I think it'd be really cool to get this thing working again. It's just, I like engineering. I like elegant engineering and this is neat because nowadays this would all be done electronic and there's, there's no, there, it's a totally different type of art for that. This is mechanical, straight up, Nothing to it. It's, it's raw, and I dig that. So if you're interested, if you're a Geek Group member and you would like to tinker on the clock project, send in an email to info at thegeekgroup.org or make a comment in the forums, the link of which is right here. And I'll set this aside on a shelf, and anybody who wants to tinker with it is welcome to. So until next time, I'm Chris Bowden. You are not. You guys have fun. I'll see you around. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.